All right, thank you for showing up. Um, this is our presentation, Printing in Your Language, Levering, Leveraging Drupal's Multilingual Features. Um, but first, this is a very exciting day for all of you. Very, very exciting. We're gonna announce a brand new digital product for our ships. So you'll be the first group to really see this unveiled. It's, I, I'm just thrilled. Um, let me tell you a little bit about it. It is 100% recyclable. It gets fantastic battery life, and it's super, super cheap to produce. And now I'm gonna show it to you, if you're ready. Are you guys ready? <laughs> All right, here it is. It's a printed piece of paper. Um, you know, which is kind of, Really, when you think about digital and digital transformation and digital products in Drupal and content management in Drupal, we think about screens. Um, and we definitely do screens. We run a product called Princess Z on our ships, and it is our guest experience platform. It's based on Drupal. Drupal runs on each one of our 17 vessels. Um, we deliver a ton of information to our guests uh, via this, via their mobile phone or uh, their laptop or digital signage, but we've also started delivering that same content, that same data to uh, what has traditionally been our daily onboard newsletter, which shows basically every single event that happens on board, has advertisements, has information about the ports we're going to, about people um, that are, you know, the captain, the uh, most traveled passenger, hours of operation for all of our stuff. Um, and originally we had built our product to essentially replace this. But this piece of paper holds a lot of value to our passengers. It is a physical like takeaway of their time on board the ship. And it's free, but it is like a big memento for them. So they'll collect all of these for every day. We print them every day on board. But as we went down this journey of kind of digital transformation, um, and went down this, uh, creating this guest experience app and put Drupal out on the ships and Drupal is kind of our content hub for essentially everything we do on board nowadays. Um, we really embraced the concept of, you know, create once, publish everywhere. So while our first product was Princess at Sea, um, it's now expanded quite a bit. Uh, so one piece of content, like say an event that's scheduled in a location, can be reutilized uh, throughout our guest experience platform, can be in digital signage, can be used in the case of like hours or, um, or, uh, or uh, menu items, can be repurposed for use in back-end systems, front-end systems, and this stuff here, printed material. Um, yeah, so now Hillary gets to talk a little bit. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, Drupal is kind of the center of everything. So we create content once, and then you're publishing it everywhere, which is sort of um, how everything's done on the ship. So not only, like Nate said, is that in one place on land, but this is in sort of a harsh environment where it's on board a ship, where we have satellite connectivity. It's not constant internet connection. You know, it's, it's, it's a difficult situation in some cases. And on each of these ships, we actually have a print shop. So there's a full operating print shop on all 17 ships, producing all sorts of collateral that's required to go to the rooms, including the Princess Patter, which is that da daily newsletter that'll go to each of the stateroom cabins every morning. And then to add to the complexity, our passengers come from all over the world. So they're speaking any number of languages. Um, Princess at Sea is currently served in Drupal in nine different languages, the ninth language being English. So we have to service not only all of our guests in all different languages to Princess at Sea, which we can do easily with Drupal multilingual, um, but now we need to serve that in print. So in the past, when we served that in print, you can see this is our original Princess Patter. You can see it's the guest experience is not quite the same <laughs> as for our English passengers, which is sort of an afterthought, and, and it's not really um, fitting with our brand guidelines. We don't really want to um, have that perception to our, to our guests on board. Um, and this is also our process before, which is a, 
a bit complex. <laughs> you can see there's a, lot of, there's a lot of redundancy. There's a printer on board whose role it is to gather all this information from all different departments. Um, there's actually people physically walking to different parts of the ship to get content from these different areas and then bringing them to the printer so that you can put together this newsletter. Um, the newsletter then goes through a whole bunch of different approval processes. There's a separate person building the multilingual version of the pattern. So there's sort of um, kind of a disconnected experience there. Um, for our guests, so it's just really complex. And it was all done. Uh, it was all done with InDesign, so it was copy paste. Uh, yes. So basically, you know, one of the, the challenges we've always had is that to make sure that content is identical no matter what touch point somebody had. So we spent a lot of effort in our digital platforms to consolidate this, but none of that was really being realized um, for our paper printed process. Right. Um, right. So then after we've kind of moved this digital, um, the advantages we had of digitizing this um, Princess at Sea, all of our content in Drupal, why not move that same content into our print processes? So uh, we have a digital, um, we have a um, event scheduling system on board. Instead of copying and pasting some of that content into our digital newsletter, when we feed that into Princess at Sea, um, that content then goes out to Lingotech, where it gets professionally translated into all of our different languages. Um, all of this content is stored in one content hub, and it's, it's a consistent experience then throughout all 17 ships. Um, and then it goes down to our application we've um, developed, which is a decoupled application called Canvas. It's built with Angular front end, and it's a print layout application. So we're using this now instead of InDesign. So this application automatically feeds in all of our content in English, same content that's being published to the guests on their mobile devices. They can now consume that same content in this printed form. Um, and it goes into an onboard printing press, and then the patterns can be pushed out in both English and then any of the eight languages that we need to to produce it in. And one of the, um, you know, one of the primary motivators here was that, I mean, as you saw on the, the screen before, the um, multilingual version of this definitely did not look like this, and it looked like an, it definitely looked like an inferior product. Um, so a big motivator was to make sure that none of our guests feel like they're getting any different level of service no matter what language they speak. So if we could create a process that not only simplified uh, what we were doing, but also standardized what we were doing, um, then you know, it would be a benefit from everyone. We could deliver the exact same experience to every single guest on board. So with that, we'll show you a quick demo of Canvas. So you can see what that looks like. So this is Canvas. You can see it looks sort of like um, our princess pattern that was in the earlier slides. So all of this content is being coming is coming in from web services um, yep, right from out Drupal, of Drupal, straight yep. from Drupal. So you can select the date to begin with. When you pick the date, it automatically pulls all of the content from that date. Um, we've designed a number of different templates. So we have embarkation days, sea days, that the format sort of changes. So you'll see on a sea day, for example, we're going to pull an image of the captain, but perhaps on an embarkation day, it's going to have a little bit different layout. So there's a lot of different rules that we were following with InDesign that we've now built into our Canvas application. And it's pretty neat. We can change all of the different font sizes. Um, we've set minimum max limits on these to make it look just like you would in InDesign. But there's no creating any content manually now. We can select which content we want to show and hide from Drupal, and it'll automatically populate it. Um, different ads that are scheduled for that day, um, we can show and hide. So we might see these ads in Canvas in the printed pattern, but it can also go to all different endpoints, right? So those ads might be served to a digital signage um, system on board or other areas of the, of the ship. Same thing with hours. All this information is stored in Drupal, so we can choose which locations, which hours we want to show. And then, as we mentioned earlier, the event scheduling system feeds in all of the events for the day. So you'll see all these listed on each side of the, the inside of the pattern. And all this content is maintained in Drupal. Um, 
So all of the APIs this is talking to are coming directly from Drupal. Uh, all the uh, descriptions, et cetera, are all coming from Drupal. Um, and they're stored in a couch DB. So I can save this and come back to it later. Um, but here. Yeah, this is, now, this is exciting. <laughs> I can drum can't roll. Keep, yeah. <laughs> so we, you know, the title of this topic is Leveraging Drupal's Multilingual. Well, let's show you how we leverage Drupal's multilingual content. So all of this, this is done. I've, I've created this piece of paper that we're going to print um, for our 4,000 guests on board. Oh, I've got you know 25 um, Chinese passengers who are chartered here. We're in Alaska. Um, they're a special group. I know that they've already requested um, a Chinese version of the pattern. So me as the printer now, or Hillary as the printer, yeah. can. Uh, so you can, not knowing any simplified Chinese whatsoever, I can switch it to Chinese, and now I have a Chinese version of the pattern. So I don't have. There's no need for a separate person who speaks Chinese stationed in each of these ships to go through and create this pattern manually. You can see it'll have the same design as the English version of the pattern. And then you can go ahead and save this. But one of the neat aspects of this, like I said, I don't need to speak Chinese. So if I'm trying to figure out what version of the ad this is, and I have no idea because I'm a printer, the configuration options are still all in English. So I can still configure it just like I would um, the English version of the pattern. We can change sizes just like you did before. So you can change anything you did in the English version as well. You'll notice a lot of times when we switch languages, and this happened in InDesign as well, um, the length of content changes quite a bit. So when you switch to different languages because of character sizes and stuff like that, you'll see sometimes you need to resize these boxes as well, which we can do, and then change the font sizes as well, the different sizes to get them to fit in there. And then from there you can print. And the shells that we have to print on have the headers and stuff like that in there, so you won't see these. But it will print the full pattern then in any language we want. We can do that in English. We can do that in Chinese. So yeah. Is the translation occurring? So the translation, uh, it happens in a couple different ways. So we, because this is all uh, guest facing, it's all human translated, and that's all done through Lingotech. Um, as our team is. Um, we also heavily leverage the integration with Lingotech because it really simplifies the process of maintaining translations with a, with a site. So what's, what's the most important thing with Lingotech? Is it this uh, so, app? So, yeah, so it's a little bit, it's very similar. Um, we kind of, we have a master Drupal shore site that lives in our office in Santa Clarita. That's actually feeding via migrate module and um, APIs out to all the different ships, the content that goes there. So the translation and the Lingotech connection all live shoreside. Um, so content that is created shoreside automatically goes to Lingotech. Its translate, translation is done there. When it's marked complete, it basically automatically comes back into Drupal and is published out to the ships. Um, on board, if they need, there's a new event that came up and they need to create a description for it, they can do that right in Drupal there. They'll notify somebody shoreside that, hey, something's coming that needs to be translated. Um, it automatically will migrate back to our shoreside Drupal um, and then go out to Lingotech where you know, we know that there's stuff coming in, so we'll have somebody ready to do that translation within Lingotech. And then it kind of follows that Sam comes back into Drupal and then republishes back out updates that uh, piece. Um, and it's actually something interesting to see from a kind of a technical standpoint is, so this is kind of the description in CouchDB of the patter. And you'll see we're referencing everything here basically just by UUIDs. So all that content is being referenced by one single ID. So no matter what language it's in, it's gonna pull out the appropriate translation out of Drupal. So using Canvas, there's a lot of um, clear advantages we noticed right away. Um, one was in time savings and cost savings, obviously. Um, we saw about 20 collective hours each day were saved between people 
from all different departments running back and forth to do approvals, building the whole paddle, patter, kind of that redundant workflow where there's a separate person building a separate version of the pattern. There's somebody copying and pasting events from another system into InDesign. There's just a lot of um, redundancy there. Um, and that's, you know, 20 hours per ship per day. Right, per so ship, 20 yeah, 17, times 17 right. times 365. Yeah, it's um, huge savings. <laughs> um, like I mentioned, the international host on board can now service those Chinese passengers rather than worrying about building this custom pad or separate from um, the, what the printer's duties are. Um, on top of that, we also saw um, increased standardization now across the fleet. So if everybody is, on each ship is using um, Drupal and the same content that's being served to our phones and all the other devices that we're consuming um, this content from is now being is now being produced in the printed newsletter the same way. We're kind of controlling that content, controlling that experience where each guest gets that same consistent standardized experience. Um, same thing with the language tone. So each um, host on board would translate it the way they thought was the best way to do it. Using Lingotech, we have professional translators. We know the tone that we want to translate it in, and it's consistent across the fleet regardless of which ship you're on as a guest. And then last is um, a much bigger um, implication, I guess, that we didn't always think about is that it's a live document. So if I'm the printer and today the dress code changed and I didn't get the memo, went to print, there's a lot of issues here. If, um, if the dress code changes and it's coming through live on my document right before print, I'm seeing it come through because that web service is live, my document is live. Um, another situation that happens sometimes if we skip a port, so bad weather, we're going to skip um, a port in the Bahamas. Um, we're not, now going to have a C day. We have to change the template, same content's all feeding through. There's not this whole go into InDesign, get a new template, copy and paste all the content again. You know, we, we save a lot of time that way. And then also other opportunities. Do you want to yeah, skip sure. So, I mean, the Canvas application, while doing the pattern, was like our first step in. It's actually one of the more complicated documents that we create on board uh, print wise. Um, but there's a, like we, Hillary had mentioned before, there's a ton of printed material that goes out that um, can you know, really benefit from a digital transformation and the operational side. And one of those key ones is in particular like restaurant menus like you see here. Um, I'm gonna plug my uh, coworker Sabu and Davis's uh, presentation tomorrow about what we're doing with food and beverage and restaurant menu management and all that stuff because basically that provides another data source that we can pull into another template and just in the same way have up to the minute translated identical versions of printed material going out to our guests on board no matter what uh, language they speak as well as you know port guides and uh, flyers about specials at the spa and all this stuff and we can utilize that cross channel um, and that's kind of w what we're thinking of right now is all these different endpoints that we have on board the ship we've done some trials of using these menus and so on in digital signage as well because um, that is kind of a rough thing sometimes finding out the menus change every day in our restaurant venues so finding out what's actually for dinner tonight is a challenge particularly if it's changing and you don't speak English as your first language, you know, who knows what you're going to be ordering. <laughs> so, um, but then, you know, there's uh, uh, video on demand systems. There's, um, you know, we designed our original app so it would work on anything with a web browser. So essentially anything we have a web browser on or anything that can ingest um, our REST APIs can, can have an interface into this, whether it's front of the house, back of the house, whatever. Um, well, good, we, we're, we're doing really good on time. We're really worried about this. Um, so we'll have time for questions, but first, th these are the people that made all this stuff happen. This is our team. Um, we're the guest experience application team at Princess. We have uh, teams in offshore and uh, both here in the US. Um, we are hiring, so hey, please come see me. You'll see me with this hat, the whole DrupalCon. The other people may or may not wear their hats. I'm trying to pressure them into that. So please ask them where their hats are. Um, uh, and like I said, we have a couple other sessions we're doing. The one tomorrow is going to be really interesting on um, menu management. It's a large scope content management problem that um, Drupal is solving for us, as well as on Thursday morning, we're doing something about how we do DevOps and support when we have 
vessels all over the world in different time zones who may or may not be online and you know may or not, may not be able to get through to us and how we kind of handle that in 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 this kind of environment but Oh yeah, if anybody's interested. So we showed all the, the angular stuff, but if anybody, we can show some of what the Drupal side of the house really looks like, because like I said, all this content is driven through there, or, or just any questions anybody may have. I know we rushed through. Show of hands and multilingual? Oh yeah, um, here, yeah. I'll let you ask. Can we get a show of hands? How many people are doing multilingual right now in their sites? Okay. How do you find it? <laughs> How's it? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> and how many people uh, is, is print still really relevant for their businesses where they still need to work with print? Okay, just a few. Okay. I have a question about what type of printers are you sending us? Since W's got a print shop, it's got a print we do. It's it's not digital print, so they're they're they're. Um, I mean, it's a printing I, press, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's printing press. It's inked. It's two two color basically. This was, um, we printed this in our office. Yeah, that was printed in our office. So you can um, kind of see the quality of it. We can put some of these out here so you yeah, guys can see them yeah. too. Yeah, um, we looked at like digital presses uh, a while ago because that would have made some of this stuff like much easier. But uh, between the cost. That was one part of it, but also these things are reliable that we have out on board. They're workhorses, so they can just be chugging away constantly all day, you know, every single day, and not require a whole lot of, you know, um, uh, maintenance. I mean, it, it's a logistics problem for a ship to get maintenance to come out to fix a printing problem um, as well. You know, this is down on deck four under the water line. Um, it's hard to get to, hard to service, hard to replace. So. Um, but these things have been serving us for ages uh, reliably. So, you know, one of these things where a digital press would have been awesome. We looked into it, but uh, the benefits did not outweigh the, the cons to it. Show of hands, does anybody want to see the Drupal side? Any interest in that? Yeah? Okay. I can show you that as well. So we, we yeah yeah so they um, they do offer it so any guest in at any time can say I I'd like this yeah. um, uh, but primarily it's based on people who prior to joining the ship will say um, you know this is what I would like yeah yeah and the, and they'll they you know in the past always tried to accommodate as best they could but as what we've seen over the past you know since you know four three, four years, something like that, is that the uh, you know, English speakers were are always the majority of the passengers, but the, the percentage has slowly decreased, particularly in areas like Alaska and these destination kind of areas where we tr it was traditionally very North American driven, uh, but that's changing quite, quite drastically now. And, and Europe too, Europe used to be a lot of primarily North Americans taking um, vacations in Europe and going on the cruise, but it, that's, population on board is changing quite a bit as well. And we do have Asian charters where about 80% of the passengers are speaking Chinese. They aren't even speaking English majority. And they're all getting Chinese patterns for the most part on those ships. I'm assuming in Canvas you can control brands. I mean, so the templates, like you want to buy in, so that always yeah. Sure. Yeah. the path of my farm, right? We yep. actually did that yep. mid-project. We actually, they redesigned, marketing redesigned the entire newsletter on us. We're going to start over, new fonts, new layouts, and kind of customize all those pieces to come up with Canvas 2.0, which is what this is. But, but yeah, there's, it's giving them the, uh, enough flexibility to do what right. they need on board without total freedom. Right. I, mean, I saw the dragons, yeah. the drag stuff, that was neat. Yeah. I'm out of room, or I need to make right. them smaller because it doesn't matter or something. Yeah. Right. But it has been traditionally with our InDesign process, you know, there are rules. We should only be doing six ads per right. day, you know, and that's those are marketing driven and there has to be a mix of revenue versus non revenue ads and that stuff right. and Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so now now that can be you know, now we can make sure that we're following those guidelines on board that the, the central repository is in Canvas for securing what the brand looks like and what the user is in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Is all your printing done in push? In other words, you get ready to print, then you print, then you're done. Or do you do any print on demand? Like, is somebody needs to go and see all the videos and print the slide going for those? 
it's yeah it's mostly bulk you know pre right pre done but what we're hoping to do with this project in total is that that we don't have to overprint you know because that generally happens you you know you think you're into this or or you you're short by 20 you know <laughs> um, so yeah so that's the the long term vision is that we can make this much more you know efficient operationally they can be done just in time rather than having to be done you know, two, three crews in advance. So if there's, particularly with restaurants and there's menu changes that have to happen because we can't source some ingredients, you know, that we can um, do them, you know, we'll have the set that can be used no matter what and then the on-demand ones can be done as required, yeah. So I'll show you the Drupal part real quick. I'll create another ad. We've got two ads in here. So we put links directly in Canvas that go right to Drupal. I'm gonna sign into our site. So you can go in, this is our list of ads. I'm gonna put a new one in. They actually do it by codes. Let me pick a different one. I can do it in here. We'll see how it works. We were having some issues with our uh, both, environments yeah, earlier. So. This is VPNing right to our office. Live demos is always the fun. <laughs> yeah, so. There you go. So you actually can see how we um, create ads and a lot of different things. In Princess at Sea, we use um, libraries, content libraries, with replacement patterns. And the reason for this is primarily <laughs> multilingual. So we want to translate majority of the content, but then we need placeholders, um, kind of variables to drop in. So for example, live painting demonstration, the artist names we can drop in, but translate all the rest of the content around it. Um, and one, one note there is what these also allow us to do, when they come in for translation into uh, the TMS and Lingotech, um, our translators are able to move those um, those uh, replacement fields around because the positioning will not always be the same depending upon the language um, being spoken. Right, um, yeah, it changes. So you, we just select the date that we want this ad to run in the voyage, filled in those replacement patterns, I'll hit save, and that was created, let's go and find it. So let me bring this back to April 15th. Now you see it well, there's two now, but I created fine arts, fine arts just came in. There, you see Jane Smith and John Smith pulled that one in. And then we can translate it. And that's the same yeah. for each of the different areas. Question. Yeah. So we, there's one case we do uh, machine translation. Um, majority of it is human translation because of more, uh, we've had some mistakes in the past where, you know, the translation wasn't quite right and it was the wrong meaning, you know? Um, so there's a lot of oversight to make sure it uh, you know, fits in the brand voice. That's more what it is more than anything. But we do use machine translation. We have a um, onboard evaluation that guests can fill out. Um, that includes a, um, uh, a text field. So th the ship will actually see these results of like how their shore excursions were or what they thought about this and that about the ship. They'll see that live. It starts being collected about 36 hours before the end of a voyage. Um, anybody can fill in whatever they want in those con comment fields in whatever language they want. That actually then automatically comes back shoreside, goes out to Lingotech, gets machine translated, and then goes back out to the ship. Um, so at least they can see sentiment, you know, it may not be a hundred percent uh, correct translation, but they can at least understand, oh, this guest um, encountered some issue on this shore excursion, what can I do to, to make sure that they leave the ship feeling positive about us? We are, have the ability for them to then say, okay, I, I understand mostly what this is, but I do need that extra step of a person doing a real translation of this. 
um, because primarily these this is uh, available on the ships in Asia. So sometimes you know the machine translation gets a little goofy um, with languages. So, uh, but for the most part, um, it seems to be giving them a lot of valuable. Um, on-demand immediate feedback. Um, yeah, you can act on it within 15 minutes or so. You can go, go round trip if the satellite connection's good. Yeah, we haven't we haven't though experimented much with like the new, um, you know, Google um, neural you know uh, translation that they're doing. So I don't know what the quality of the of that stuff looks like of what we looked like uh, you know two and a half years ago or so. Um, but primarily since it's going to go out to the guests, we've kind of yeah, it's been very we we want to be very. We have to be 100% certain it's going to work, you know, um, for the machine translated before we would switch to it. But one of the neat things about Lingotech is that you can have multiple stages of translation. So, I mean, Hillary works with Lingotech quite a bit more. Yeah, there's so. actually, there's actually, um, you can set up any kind of custom workflow you want within Lingotech. So we have it assigned to a translator, and then we have employees at Princess that will review the tone. So we have somebody at Princess that speaks Chinese. She'll review the tone to make sure it matches what Princess Cruises kind of the expectations are. So we kind of, it, it'll roll through that process, right? She'll get a notification in the workflow that it's ready um, for review, and then once she approves it, now it's approved and actually goes to the fleet. So yeah, and it can pull from. You can have machine translation as the first step. You can have you know multiple different flavors of how you want the translation workflow to look like. And then they store in our translation memory. They can be repurposed, and it's kind of that same tone is stored in our in our translation memory. So, yeah. free plug for Lingotech, but you should check them out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, it's been a really good yeah. uh, uh, relationship great. for us, so I highly recommend them. Yeah, uh, for sure. Any other questions or? Want to see anything else? Yeah, feel free to come up and take a look at the patterns. We have an English version and a Chinese version that we printed off in our office. You can take a look at, at how it comes out. All right. Well, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Is there one more? Oh, just that. Oops. <laughs>